a man scaling a 19-story burning building in Philadelphia, the hopes of reaching his mother trapped inside. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on our channel, Immortal News. Today, we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Sinelnikov. For the next four minutes, I'm going to take you on an unguided tour. Number nine, Michael Sinelnikov, a talented British-born Canadian actor, director, producer, and writer, left a lasting mark on the arts, most notably for his role as Professor Arthur Summerlee on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World. His career spanned decades across film, television, and theater, and he was recognized for his distinctive performances in films like 300 and The Greatest Game Ever Played. Sinelnikov's work extended beyond acting, having directed and produced television dramas for CBC Montreal and served as the first director of Quebec's International Cirque du Soleil in 1984, further cementing his legacy in both performance and production. Born on August 1, 1928 in London, England, Michael Sinelnikov hailed from a diverse background of Russian, French and German descent. He attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art and the Italia Conti Stage School in London before moving to Canada, where he continued his studies at Carleton University in Ottawa. Sinelnikov enjoyed a varied career, directing national theatre productions and working with acclaimed companies such as Montreal's Centaur Theatre and the Piggery Theatre. His versatility and passion for the arts were reflected in his numerous television roles, including recurring parts on series such as Naked Josh and The Art of More. Beyond the stage and screen, Sinelnikov contributed to the arts as a writer and mentor, demonstrating a lifelong commitment to storytelling and creativity. His presence in Canadian arts and his work with Cirque du Soleil showcased his dedication to pushing boundaries in entertainment. Michael Sinelnikov passed away at the age of 95. His contributions to theatre, television and film will continue to influence and inspire future generations of performers and creators. Tributes to Michael Sinelnikov. Number 8. Leah Pericoli, a legendary Italian tennis star and style icon, left an everlasting mark on both the sports world and the world of fashion. Known as much for her tennis prowess as her trailblazing on-court outfits, Pericoli became a symbol of elegance and athleticism. Throughout her illustrious career, she claimed an astounding 27 national titles in singles, doubles, and mixed doubles, and reached the fourth round of Wimbledon three times. Her influence on the sport went beyond her skill, as she revolutionized tennis fashion in the 1950s and 60s, famously wearing dresses adorned with feathers and lace, designed by Teddy Tinling. Born on March 22, 1935 in Milan, Italy, Pericoli became Italy's top female player, holding the position for 14 consecutive years. She reached the last 16 of the French Open twice and played at Wimbledon multiple times, capturing the hearts of fans not only with her fierce competition but with her iconic style. Pericoli's commitment to the sport extended beyond her playing days, as she later became a beloved TV presenter and tennis commentator, further enhancing her status as a cultural figure. Off the court, Pericoli twice overcame cancer, battling uterine cancer in 1973 and breast cancer in 2012. Her resilience and courage in the face of adversity made her an inspiration to many. In her personal life, she was known for her warmth and grace, serving as a mentor and symbol of hope for both tennis players and fans alike. Leah Pericoli passed away at the age of 89. Her legacy as a pioneer in both tennis and fashion continues to inspire future generations, both on and off the court. Tributes to Leah Pericoli.
Number 7. Jerry Miller The iconic frontman of The Untouchables, leaving behind a remarkable legacy as a pioneer of American ska music. As the lead vocalist and Timbales player for The Untouchables, Miller was instrumental in bringing ska to the forefront of the Southern California music scene in the early 1980s. Known for their high-energy performances and fusion of ska, mod, and soul influences, The Untouchables became America's first recognized ska band, and Miller's charismatic stage presence and soulful voice played a pivotal role in their rise to fame. Born in Los Angeles, California, Jerry Miller joined The Untouchables in 1981, contributing his unique vocals and vibrant personality to a band that would become synonymous with the L.A. Mod revival. Alongside his bandmates, Miller helped popularize the band's infectious sound, and their early singles, such as Twist and Shake and The General, earned the band a dedicated following. Their 1985 hit Free Yourself not only became an anthem of the era, but also achieved commercial success in the UK, reaching number 1, 26 on the charts. Throughout his career, Miller remained the heart and soul of the untouchables, even as the lineup evolved over the years. His passion for music and his commitment to his craft kept the band alive and relevant for decades. Beyond his work with the untouchables, Miller's influence extended to the broader ska and mod revival scenes, inspiring countless musicians and bands who followed in his footsteps. Jerry Miller passed away at the age of 74. His contributions to music and his trailblazing role in bringing ska to American audiences will never be forgotten. His voice, energy and legacy will continue to resonate with fans and musicians around the world. Tributes to Jerry Miller. Number 6. Greg Landry, a celebrated American football quarterback, left a lasting legacy both on and off the field. Known for his remarkable tenure in the NFL, Landry played for the Detroit Lions, Baltimore Colts, and Chicago Bears, earning accolades for his athletic prowess and leadership. Selected in the first round of the 1968 NFL Draft, Landry quickly established himself as a formidable player. In 1971, he passed for 2,237 yards and 16 touchdowns, earning a Pro Bowl selection. Notably, in 1976, he was named the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year after a standout season with the Lions, where he set several team records. Landry's dual threat abilities made him a unique talent, rushing for over 2,600 yards and 21 touchdowns during his career. Born on December 18, 1946 in Nashua, New Hampshire, Landry starred as a quarterback at the University of Massachusetts before launching his professional career. After his playing days in the NFL and USFL, Landry transitioned into coaching, where he further contributed to the sport. He served as the quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears, and later took on similar roles with the Cleveland Browns and the University of Illinois. His coaching acumen helped shape numerous players and contributed to successful seasons, particularly with the Bears and Lions. Beyond the gridiron, Landry was a beloved figure known for his mentorship and involvement in his community. In 2012, he was inducted into the National Polish American Sports Hall of Fame, a testament to his impact on and off the field. Greg Landry passed away at the age of 77. His legacy as a player, coach, and mentor will continue to inspire future generations of football players and fans alike. Tributes to Greg Landry Number 5. Jack Caldwell, a gifted Australian singer-songwriter, left an everlasting mark on the music world with his evocative songwriting and powerful performances. Known for his deeply emotional music, Caldwell captivated audiences with his debut album, Swan Dream, in 2020, which was lauded by critics for its visceral impact and theatrical depth. 
Produced by area-winning artist Sarah Blasco, Swan Dream was hailed by NME as one of the best Australian albums of the year. His collaborations with acclaimed artists such as Owen Pallett and remixes by Robin Guthrie of the Cocteau Twins further solidified his reputation as an innovative and boundary-pushing artist. Born on October 26, 1989, Caldwell grew up in Sydney, Australia, surrounded by music, with a concert pianist mother and a deep connection to the arts. He attended the Sydney Conservatorium of Music High School, where he honed his musical skills before stepping into the spotlight with his 2015 single Don't Cry Those Tears, which topped community radio charts and garnered widespread attention. Caldwell's bold, heartfelt songwriting was a hallmark of his work, and he became a beloved figure in the Australian music scene. Beyond his music, Caldwell was an advocate for LGBTQ rights and used his platform to champion causes close to his heart. His 2016 song No Mercy was a tribute to the late Tyrone Unsworth and spoke to Caldwell's deep commitment to social justice. He also supported Australian marriage equality, organizing and performing at benefit concerts for the cause. Jack Caldwell passed away at the age of 34. His legacy as a fearless and passionate artist will continue to resonate through his music and the lives he touched. Tributes to Jack Caldwell. Number 4. John Gierock, a beloved American author and angling writer, was best known for his captivating works on the art and philosophy of fly fishing. His seminal book, Trout Bum, popularized the term and made Gierock a respected voice in the angling community. Over his decades-long career, Gierock penned over 20 books, including Sex, Death, and Fly Fishing and All Fishermen Are Liars, where he combined wit, insight, and an abiding passion for nature. His writing appeared in Gray's Sporting Journal, Field and Stream, and the New York Times, earning him a devoted following among outdoor enthusiasts and literary readers alike. He was also inducted into the Catskills Fly Fishing Hall of Fame in 2015 and received the prestigious Roderick Haig Brown Award in 1994 for his contributions to fly fishing literature. Born on January 21, 1946 in Fort Collins, Colorado, Garrick was drawn to the natural world early in life. After studying philosophy and English at Findlay College, he moved back to Colorado in 1969 and began fishing and writing in earnest. Known for his sharp observations on life, nature, and the joy of fishing, Girak's work often chronicled his adventures with close friend and fly-tying legend, A.K. Best. Girak's words helped shape a generation of anglers, offering wisdom not just on the technical aspects of the sport, but on the deeper reflective side of being on the water. Girak passed away at the age of 78. His legacy lives on through his writing, which continues to inspire readers and anglers around the world. His works remain a treasured guide to both the sport of fly fishing and the art of finding peace in nature. Tributes to John Girak. Number 3. David Burnham, a pioneering investigative journalist, gained national recognition for his groundbreaking work exposing corruption within the New York Police Department. His influential reporting for the New York Times in the early 1970s, which drew on information from whistleblower Frank Serpico, inspired the iconic 1973 film Serpico. Burnham's career was distinguished by his relentless pursuit of the truth and his dedication to holding powerful institutions accountable. He received numerous prestigious accolades, including the George Polk Award for Community Service in 1968 
and the Investigative Reporters and Editors Award for Best Book in 1990 for his work, A Law Unto Itself, which examined the power and politics of the IRS. Born on January 24, 1933 in Boston, Massachusetts, and raised in New Canaan, Connecticut, Burnham attended Harvard University where he studied history. After serving in the U.S. Army's 11th and 82nd Airborne Divisions, he began his journalism career in Washington in 1958. Joining the New York Times in 1967, Burnham gained prominence with his investigations into police corruption and the mysterious death of labor activist Karen Silkwood. His work led to significant reforms and continues to inspire investigative journalism today. Burnham's career extended into academia, where he co-directed the Transactional Records Access Clearinghouse at Syracuse University, advocating for transparency and government accountability. His legacy includes his influential books, including The Rise of the Computer State and Above the Law, which delved into government secrecy and overreach. David Burnham passed away at his vacation home in Spruce Head, Maine, at the age of 91. His lifelong dedication to investigative journalism and his fearless commitment to truth have left an enduring impact on both journalism and public discourse. Tributes to David Burnham. Number 2. Barbara Blackman was a celebrated Australian writer, poet, broadcaster, and philanthropist whose contributions to the arts and advocacy for the blind left an everlasting mark on Australian culture. Renowned for her deeply reflective memoirs and essays, Blackman was also a prominent patron of the arts. In 2004, she made a generous donation of $1 million to various Australian music organizations, including the Australian Chamber Orchestra, and the Australian National University's School of Music. For her unwavering support of the arts and her advocacy for people with vision impairments, she was appointed Officer of the Order of Australia, AO, in 2012. Born Barbara Patterson on December 22, 1928 in Brisbane, Queensland. She lost her twin sister shortly after birth and her father when she was just three years old. Despite these early hardships and losing her sight by the age of 22 due to optic atrophy, Blackman's love for music and writing flourished. She became an artist's model, inspiring many of Australia's leading modernist artists, including her husband Charles Blackman, whose famous Alice in Wonderland paintings often featured her. The couple married in 1952 and had three children before divorcing in 1978. Throughout her life, Blackman embraced an unconventional path, as chronicled in her autobiography, Glass After Glass. Her intellectual pursuits spanned librettos, humorous verse, and correspondence with luminaries like poet Judith Wright. Her influence extended well beyond her writing, touching the lives of many through her philanthropy and advocacy work. Barbara Blackman passed away at the age of 95 in Canberra. Her legacy as a writer, arts patron, and advocate for the visually impaired will continue to inspire future generations in both Australia and beyond. Tributes to Barbara Blackman. What's trending on the internet? News 1. Marvin Schlachter, a pioneering figure in the music industry, passed away on September 19, 2024, at the age of 90. Born in Manhattan to Jewish immigrants, Schlachter played a vital role in shaping the careers of legendary artists such as Dionne Warwick, The Shirelles, and Tammy Terrell. He co-founded Scepter Records, where he oversaw hits during the 1960s, including many from the Burt Bacharach Hal David catalog. Throughout his career, Schlachter led several prominent labels, including Janus, Prelude, and Savoy Records, where he championed genres like disco and gospel. His work in the music business was influential, particularly during the disco era when he brought artists like France Jolie and James D. Train Williams to prominence through Prelude Records. 
In addition to his music career, Schlachter devoted time to his family and philanthropic efforts. He was married to Trudy Weiner for over 60 years and had three children. His impact on the music industry spanned over decades, with his legacy living on through the countless hits he helped bring to life. Schlachter passed away in Manhattan, leaving behind a lasting imprint on the world of music. News 2. A 26-year-old man was shot and killed by police in Nashville on Friday night after an alleged carjacking. According to the Metro Nashville Police Department, MNPD, Adam Rodriguez and his girlfriend crashed their Kia into an Uber driver's Honda minivan before carjacking the vehicle at gunpoint. The incident took place near 8th Avenue and Rosa Parks Boulevard in downtown Nashville. Officers located the stolen vehicle less than 30 minutes later in North Nashville. Police deployed spike strips to stop the minivan and pursued Rodriguez to a residence on 10th Avenue North. Body camera footage shows MNPD officer Pierce Moore repeatedly instructing Rodriguez to drop his gun as he approached the back porch of the house. When Rodriguez lifted the weapon, Officer Moore fired, according to police. Rodriguez was transported to Vanderbilt Medical Center, where he later died. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and the Davidson County District Attorney's Office are now reviewing the incident, while Officer Moore has been placed on routine administrative assignment. MNPD stated that the investigation will be thorough and take time to complete. News 3. A tragic incident occurred in the English Channel, where a two-year-old child and three adults died while attempting the dangerous crossing from France to Britain. French authorities reported that the child was found crushed in an overloaded dinghy carrying nearly 90 migrants. The boat suffered engine failure off the coast of Boulogne-sur-Mer, leading to a desperate rescue call. In a separate incident, three adults, two men and a woman, were found unconscious at the bottom of another overcrowded boat near Calais. They likely suffocated and drowned in the panic. French and British officials condemned the tragedies, vowing to intensify efforts to dismantle the smuggling networks responsible for these perilous crossings. The ministers emphasized the human cost of these deadly voyages, calling the deaths appalling. The incidents bring the total number of migrant deaths attempting to cross the channel this year to 51. Both governments have reiterated their commitment to combating human trafficking and improving safety measures in an effort to prevent further loss of life. News 4. In an astonishing act of heroism in West Philadelphia, a man scaled a burning 19-story building in 2019 to rescue his bedridden mother, sparking awe and admiration across the country. Now, five years later in 2024, Germain's brave actions continue to inspire people everywhere. At the time, Germain, now 40, received a call from his sister informing him that their mother's apartment building was on fire. Knowing his mother couldn't escape due to her health condition, Germain rushed to the scene. When the authorities blocked his entrance, he took matters into his own hands. Despite having an injured hip from an earlier accident, Germain climbed the building's balconies like a real-life Spider-Man with only a pair of wire cutters in hand. The fire, which started in a trash compactor, was eventually contained, and Germain found his mother unharmed. His incredible climb, captured on video, quickly went viral. Although police initially threatened to arrest him, they eventually let him go after understanding his motives. Germain later said, There are no limits when it comes to my mother. Today Germain's act of love and courage remains a symbol of selflessness and the power of family bonds. News 5. After a harrowing accident in May, where she fell five stories from a balcony, 20-year-old actress Mamie Lavarock has made a heartwarming return to her when calls the Hart family. Lavarock reunited with her castmates at Hallmark's Hardy's family reunion last month, smiling and making heart signs while using a walker to assist her mobility. Lavarock had been left in critical condition following the fall and faced life-threatening injuries, which she has since been steadily recovering from. On October 1st, she posted a hopeful message on social media, saying, At the end of every rainbow there is a pot of gold, returning to the warm light of the when calls the heart reunion. Though her journey to recovery is ongoing, Lavarock's progress has been nothing short of inspiring. She recently took her first step since the accident, supported by medical staff and cheered on by her family. Lavarock has returned home, where her family continues to care for her privately. With gratitude for the support and prayers she's received, Lavarock's story is a powerful reminder of resilience and hope. Number 1. 
Naima Lamcharki, a beloved Moroccan actress, left an indelible mark on the world of cinema and television. Renowned for her captivating performances and ability to bring characters to life, she was celebrated for her roles in films such as In Search of My Wife's Husband, 1993, and The Autumn of the Apple Trees, 2020. Over the course of her distinguished career, Lamcharki received numerous accolades, including the Best Female Lead Award at the 6th National Film Festival in 2001 and the Best Actress Award at the 2021 Malmo Arab Film Festival for her powerful performance in The Autumn of the Apple Trees. Her work resonated deeply with audiences, both in Morocco and internationally. Born on July 11, 1943 in Casablanca, Morocco, Naima Lamcharki began her acting career in the 1960s, appearing in films such as The Revenge of Don Mendo, 1961, and Casablanca, Nest of Spies, 1963. Her talent quickly earned her a reputation as one of Morocco's most respected actresses, known for her versatility and ability to evoke deep emotions through her roles. Throughout the years, Lamcharki continued to be a prominent figure in Moroccan cinema, with standout roles in films like Blood Wedding, 1977, and The Beautiful Days of Scheherazade, 1982. Beyond her on-screen work, Lamcharki was a passionate advocate for the arts, contributing to the growth and recognition of Moroccan cinema on the global stage. Her dedication to her craft and her influence on the next generation of actors have cemented her as a cultural icon in her home country. Naima Lamcharki passed away in Casablanca at the age of 81. Her legacy will continue to inspire and uplift future generations of artists and fans, leaving a lasting impact on Moroccan and global cinema. Tributes to Naima Lamcharki Gary Reinecke, a versatile and dedicated actor, made significant contributions to the film and television industries throughout his distinguished career, with a focus on Canadian cinema.